like this one goes to Cessna on the east and this probably just goes to the west hi bunnies and just past the bunnies we have Mission Point and some newer homes I don't recall being there giant boxes on the hillside I probably made a ticky tacky way back there's Oak Mountain so I guess this goes back down the canyon and maybe up over there it meets up with the normal trail that I would take over here. Last time I hiked here, or a thousand years ago in the early 19, mid 70s, when we ride our bikes up here and there were just a few ranches and that's it. Be back when streetlights came on, of course, or slightly later. Cessnon must be right up there. The sun is going down. Nice little stroll. I don't know if you can see back there. There's the other side of Cessna. Made it to the top while the sun is still out. Ah. I may not be at Chamonix, but at least it's quiet up here. I could think a little. Or not think. So now I'm going to take this alternate way back so I end up on the other side of the creek for a little bit different view. Definitely a different view. Went and seen this tree. Very cool. As a kid, I probably had no idea what these were. I just knew there was a cool dirt bike track back in there. And then I came up here with my dad the very first time and climbed the rocks way back in there. I wonder if that jump area is still over here. My friend Scott's uncle once said in Utah, nothing like the smell of horse piece on sagebrush. <laughs> There's nothing like the smell of fresh rain on sagebrush. Cowboy cologne, that is. Cool, another ancient oak. Ooh, that branch. There's a little metaphor there. I looped back around. I remember climbing way up there once. More like the hangout for people who are up to no good. Those lippy kids on the corner again. Now, if this were summer of 69, I would not be strolling around these parts because that idiot cultist lived up in these hills, spawn ranch and all that. I think I just found the jump that, I swear it was a lot bigger when I was little, <laughs> but you could go to either side. If this is it, there should be another jump on this side. You come down this hill, come flying down here. Ah, there's the other jump. Wee. Not quite the same, but yeah, there's the oak. It was a blast back in the day. Oh, such a cool winter's day. 
that you would come down here and fly off that. And the track was down there. It's all coming back. I was so close. I was just right up there because there's that other water tower. And then, love that. I'm going to go hiking up here soon on a BMX, one gear. We'd ride here, stop at Jack in the Box, maybe on the way, get some tacos, water in the Boda bag. We ran out, there'd be a hose somewhere that didn't leak carcinogens yet. <laughs> and uh, come here and then go back. So I think the tunnel's just right over there somewhere. I forget. Yep, got stuck in it once when a train was coming, tucked into the side and held on my dear life. Stupid. Survived though. That's some Stranger Things stuff up there. I better avoid that. <laughs> now that I think of it, I bet this is the old stagecoach trail. Just think of the lives that crossed on this little route. Hmm. If I go this way, I should be heading back. And I think that trailhead is around here somewhere. Maybe this is it. memories of Nathan taking me up there and just going for it. Carried that on with Genevieve. And uh, my uh, bike riding days. Precious memories. Stand by me and all that. Fog is clearing. Kind of cool. Enshrouded mysteries of memories. And the lifting of it into the consciousness of now. Birdies. Yeah. Oh, and squirrels. Hello. Okay, Raven. Have a good day. Chupé. Smokey, who lost his acoustic bass amplifier. Saw one behind John Paul Jones and the head of Jocko's rounded sound. But I didn't fret over the exact model. The 118 weighed about 40 pounds. 
We lived south of the freeway jam, the brand new 118. After practicing in my second band, my amp was nowhere to be seen. They even took my music stand. This was when I was 16. My amp rumbled like an earthquake. The Northridge one on 118, 118, 1994. Epicenter in Reseda, but that street was the location of the music store where the amp and my cash would meet. All that saved money flown out the door. Twelve years later, I stumbled to my feet and yelled, This is it! Shaken to the core. Paradigm soul shift abstract to concrete. And to focus, calm down, and hopefully snore. This Jew even used a rosary in aftershocks. Back to the missing amp. There's a bit more. And that garage is by our new place around the block. But rewind the tape to two years and two score. Back in 1982, my amplifier gone. The doors were locked, but there was no alarm. Left in the garage overnight, along with my cheap used bass, my mom knew a friend who just might solve the missing acoustic amp case. Between setting up boxing rings, two of them for Rocky Three, also working at Jack in the Box, I found another acoustic amp for me. And at the store I mentioned before, I also saw a shiny four-string glee. Like Steve Harris's on the Trooper, hanging up there was my dream. An Ibanez Roadster, along with the amp. They'd give me a discounted deal. Along with a check from my mom, my dream would now become real. I'd be a cross between Pastorius and Harris and fellow tribe member Gary Getty Lee. The Ox, the Squire, Levin on Fire, and the other Paul as in McCartney. Mr. Clark, my bass teacher's teacher, Will McGregor even subbed for Fear's Flea. Though just a beginner, I felt like a winner. As a troubled teen, he was always encouraging me. But back to the app. Will McGregor, R.I.P. I thought I should write down the serial number for the acoustic amp I had now replaced. I suddenly realized a new manual was never given to me, and you should have seen the look on my face. 3106, printed next to 118, got my manual out of a box. T'was a double valley McTwist of fate. What are the odds of all the music joints in L.A.? Luckily, I filed a police report and canceled the check right away. The store fought back, but now I had proof. We then let my mom's friend know. He took care of some business there. All of a sudden, they let the check issue go. On the receipt was a name many would come to know. Remember the opening band I missed at CSUN? Back then they were lesser known as Dubrow. Ozzy had taken Randy for good reason. Rock and roll dream, but then, oh no. KMET was on the car stereo. A strange sensation I felt. What a rock and roll blow. I knew it was super talented guitarist Randy Rhodes. His technique and sound are still felt from his brilliant afterglow. But that band forged on with the returning bassist Rudy Sarzo. They went back to their first name, and they had many a sold-out show. Mental health drove me mad as I just bought what I already owned. I had been had between the two. My stereo speakers had blown. I didn't understand impedance. I had overdriven the ohms. Sounded like wetting on Crimson's Red. One more nightmare. Another purchase postponed. Distorted bliss. Then the system was dead. Gotta rely on Walkman and headphones. The lead singer probably didn't steal it. But a few months later, we all felt the noise above and below. Bringing the Slade-esque vibes with hair metal lives. Boys and girls rock to the voice of Kevin Dubrow. Their LP platinum six times in the U.S. alone. Meanwhile, we woodshedded more in the garage, banging our heads to riffs and original tones. We never covered Quiet Riot, though, but we finally started to gig. From Silmar and Reseda to neighboring Northridge was a bit of a pain to set up our rig. Priceless experience, though. Maybe ten fans. Our roadie became professional in several famous bands. We were squished in a corner of a shag carpet room. We brought life to the parties with riffs and licks. Broomstick from Mike Stan and a smoke-filled plume from Put Out the Fire to Fire from Hendrix. Our band soon dispersed, and we went our own separate ways. But now still having fun with unique and poetic cliches.
I eventually found my own sound, expressed on E, A, D, and G. All over the neck, new notes were found, inner turmoil expressed out of me. Haiku and photography help with long-time healing, though it takes a bit of effort to be mindful with what you're dealing. Gratefulness kills off emptiness, cynicism, and restlessness. Riding, skating, and hiking free up much of the messiness. Some old habits are hard to escape, and there was a sad ending to Mr. Dubrow. He was working his way back to health, a new Quiet Riot album in tow. A little bit south of heaven, between the earth and sky, Kevin's rocking past eleven in the sweet slayed humble pie. Still getting my yayas out back on terra firma, creativity sifting through this thing called reality. Part of the process is forging forward, looking back, but having a present mentality. So time to reflect on the one I met, explained in episode one. Our first meal that we shared together was under the Northridge sun. The mid-century coffee house biffs parked near the house of drums. Paradiddle butterflies, though only friends, comforting food, relaxing and fun. Kept a coffee doily to mark the occasion for the future. Taped it to the side of my amp as a reminder if nurtured. Fast forward 21st century, married about three decades long. It's now a Christmas tree ornament displayed in our progressive song. Keeping it simple, love the basic menu, just like back in 56, classic burger venue. On Huell's show, a woman loved the hick. She got a double, but today I'll have one. They have their own smoky hickory sauce with chili, onions, mustard, secured in a fluffy bun. A root beer float complements the savory flavor. Polite patrons chat, the slow lane life we favor. Though we're on a major thoroughfare, the kids aren't whining. Words are being shared. 
No one on devices except me snapping some pics. Sauerkraut dog next time since I had the hick. Love the charred tips of a much needed veggie. Chili cheese fries a must. I am now exercise ready.